So I had this uh, friend of mine, and she was telling me her story. Her husband was dying, and he had a prescription for pain medication. So she took a few. Because, you know, it helped her cope with the stress of losing her husband. But a few pills turned into a lot of pills. And after he died, her path turned to some real dark places, man. Heroin became her escape. Then it became her prison. And she told me it was a strange existence. She was a middle-aged woman, widowed, and slowly killing herself with this powdered poison. But eventually something started to change in her. And she wanted a different life, and she wanted to get her old self back, and she started fighting that age-old spiritual war against this present darkness. And so today I want to talk about six things that you can do when the world feels like it's crashing in on you. Number one, practice giving. When we think about being generous, we, we typically just think of giving money, but true generosity is really something else. It's giving yourself. Because if you're living in a hell that you've created, it's probably because at some point you chose to ignore this principle of generosity. You've decided that your own life was more important than anyone else's around you. And so by practicing giving, and it can be money, but it doesn't have to be, but by practicing giving, you're getting out of that selfish nature of everything about you. You've create, you've put yourself as the God of your life, your world, etc. By giving, you break that, that chain. All right, so there are many ways you can give. You can donate clothes to the poor. You can donate money. You can donate time. But the most important thing to give is to love. Don't just do these things out of this weird you know, sense of need. And you may be poor yourself, and that's why I'm saying it doesn't have to be about money. But you've got to figure out a way to give something. All right, number two of the six ways to build a better life. Number two, discipline. Now, there's, a, there's some talk in the addiction world right now about giving addicts safe spaces. And I may do a whole talk on this too because I'm, I understand where they're coming from. They want a safe place where people can actually inject heroin so they don't have run the risk of um, as much of a risk of overdose, I should say, where they can also get information for treatment should they choose. But I think safe spaces are dangerous because I think we need to know the risks. We need to know what's at stake. And the second step is discipline. Discipline is the act of following a code. It's accepting responsibility for your own actions and understanding that every cause has an effect and every effect has a cause. To have a better life, we have to make sure we are controlling the things that we can control. We can't control our boss's mood. We can't control traffic. We can't control our friends' relationships. We can't control our kids' illnesses. But we can control our work ethic. We can control our language. We can control our attitude. We can control our ability to listen. We can control our ability to be patient, to help others, to give selflessly. Now, the next step be patient. You know, I almost gave up on being a doctor before I even tried. Why? Because of how long it takes to get there. You know, you got four years of college, four years of medical school, then three years or more of residency. I had to keep telling myself, look, in 10 years, you're going to look back to this moment and you wish you had started pursuing your dreams right now. And I just told myself that over and over again. And I realized it was true. And look, if your life is a wreck, it probably didn't happen overnight. And if your life is great, then it probably wasn't because of an overnight lottery ticket either. Your good decisions will add up and will make a difference, but don't expect everything to turn around the moment you do something good. Be patient. Give things time to slowly get better. Look, here's a quote I live by. I'm not sure of the source. The best time to plant a tree is 10 years ago. The second best time is today. All right, so the fourth step in the four way, I'm sorry, in the six ways 
to have a better life is be consistent. When I'm at the gym, I often see people, um, you know, working out, and I think, I wonder what kind of program they follow. Are they doing like cardio or weights? Are they strength training? Are they doing CrossFit? Are they bodybuilders? You know, what's their diet like? Are they low carb? Are they low fat? Are they vegetarian, vegan, carnivore, paleo, keto? And it's not because I'm trying to, I want to know their secret sauce. I'm just curious because it's interesting to me like how people can do different things but get such good results. Because all these things are important. What you eat and how you work out. But the most important aspect of fitness by far is consistency. And people that get results do so because they show up time and time again. And this is an important lesson. It may seem the same as patience, but it's not. You have to cultivate the energy to carry on, even when things are difficult. You have to find the courage to face your demons because things are going to get tough. Step five, focus. Look, here's how Jesus said it. He said, your eyes are windows into your body. If you open your eyes wide in wonder and belief, your body fills up with light. Here's what I'm trying to say. You focus on what you're trying to accomplish and the direction you point your arrow is the direction it will go. You don't have to focus specifically on goals, but instead on the person that you're becoming. You can get up in the morning and write down your goals. That's good. But that's not what we're really talking about here. I'm talking about something different. Did you know that one way to improve your focus is by losing your focus? Now, I know that sounds weird, so let me explain. I'm talking about meditation and prayer. When you meditate, you focus on a single point, like your breathing, and you let all the other thoughts come and go, but you maintain that focus. When you pray, you focus on God. And you've heard the old saying, let go and let God. Well, that's prayer. You're letting go of the things that don't matter anymore and you're solely focusing on the thing that does. Now the sixth step, embrace your infinite potential. Learn from your mistakes. Learn the way the world works. See the spinning wheel and all the connected cogs. Look to those that have gone before and read some books. In fact, I want you to read two books. I want you to read Ecclesiastes and read Proverbs. Ecclesiastes is about a guy that struggles with nihilism and finds the answer to the question, what is the meaning? Proverbs is, is just pure wisdom, ways that you can order your life. Now look, don't worry about understanding everything but just seek knowledge. Learn the truth and make the truth your beliefs. Do not make your beliefs the truth. And in doing this, you become the stardust of potential. Now I'm gonna give you four vows. I'm gonna finish this up, okay? These four Vows, this is kind of uh, uh, some Buddhist philosophy. They're, they're called the four bodhisattva vows. I don't really know how to pronounce it. But it's this, it's that beings are numberless, I vow to save them. Delusions are inexhaustible, I vow to end them. Dharma gates are boundless, I vow to enter them. The Buddha way is unattainable, I vow to attain it. So here's my version, my Christian version. The lost are many. I vow to reach them. Darkness is everywhere. I will be the light. The path is narrow. I shall walk it. Salvation is impossible. But with God, all things are possible.